Hi everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer bunch. Today I'm going to introduce you to abstracted florals. Wait, don't go anywhere. I know, abstract. Ah, it seems like such a crazy medium and art form. But I'm telling you what, it's more beginner friendly than you think, and it can be actually more playful and lighthearted than you think. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hello. You will sometimes hear his disembodied voice talking to me during the show. He makes sure that the cameras and everything are pointing where they go. And he's also my co-host for our weekly live beginners painting shows on YouTube. So this is something I've been doing for seven years, painting and teaching beginners all over the world how to paint. And my big mission is to just make sure that you're supported and introduce you to concepts and ideas that might seem complicated from the outside, but are actually much more accessible than you think. This fantastic floral abstract is really beginner friendly, doesn't require a lot of investment in tools, and can start introducing you to the way that lines just make meaning on a canvas and how we can get back to being playful in our painting. And I think that's the most important thing right now to do. You're learning techniques, you're bringing in new ideas and creativity, but being okay with just the process being fun, that's where the magic is. And so if in this lesson, and honestly, in every lesson, what you could do is take that inner critic and just shove them in the closet for a little while. They just don't need to be here for this. Let's not invite them. Mm. I, don't, I don't think we should invite the inner critic. They're never, I mean, do they even bring good chips and dip to the party? No, they don't. So we don't need to invite them to our little art party. They can, they can come to something else. For here, you, that negative self-talk, if you can just put it to the side. It's going to make a difference. Now I'm working on an eight by eight canvas today and I'm using phthalo green, cad yellow, cad red, yellow ochre, Mars black, and titanium white. Um, just a very simple color palette. So you can be very familiar with it. Just to let you look at where it's at on the palette is this is the phthalo green. This is the cadmium yellow. This is the cadmium red. This is the yellow ochre. Sometimes yellow ochre is called yellow oxide. This is Mars black. Any black is going to be fine. And this is titanium white. We like that because it is, well, very opaque, <laughs> you know, and super not as deadly as lead used to be. So it's an improvement in the art world at all. Now, teaching you to paint is like my great honor and joy. I like acrylic and I like watercolor. I decided to do acrylic on this taster this year because I've done a couple years where I did watercolor and I was just wanted to remind everybody, hey, I'm also, I teach the acrylic. I like mediums that are water-based and acrylic is a water-based. It's actually friendlier than people think and I love how fast it dries. I love how vibrant it is. I love that it comes in a variety of types from inks to pens to thick paints to just everything you can imagine like acrylic is really the chameleon of art mediums and it thins with water I also really love watercolor so um it was a tough decision what to bring you but I was like let's get them in let's get them painting something Let's show them that abstract doesn't have to be off-putting or overwhelming or use language that makes it seem like an alien invader into your studio. It can actually be an invitation to the sandbox of your creative heart. Now, I'm going to answer some questions about uh, creativity that the incomparable, amazing, effervescent Tamara Laporte gives all of us to do in these taster sessions. And again, I just can't tell you how lucky we all are to be here. When we come back, I'm going to answer those questions. Question one, how does painting support your health and well-being? So painting actually is factually as per many studies, supportive of your health and well-being. And there's a lot of documentation based in hard science on why that is, the way it lowers our cortisol, it helps us be in very meditative states. It also helps distract us from ideas or concepts that can be causing us a great deal of worry or pain. Now, I don't think that painting is a substitute for great self-care and great mental and physical health care. But in combination with those things, painting can really give you a space where you can stop being bombarded. I feel like I say this all the time, where you stop being bombarded by the noise, the unbelievable noise of the world, and just hear yourself. There is not one right answer 
for every person. And painting lets you hear the inner voice inside of you to find your right answer for whatever you are mulling on. And that calm time, that time in your own head and getting to know yourself again and getting to remember, oh yeah, I am a creative being and I can do amazing things. It can really help improve your self-esteem. Question two, what's most important to you as an artist? Well, I have kind of two answers for that. For me personally, what's most important to me as an artist is to create work that I find spiritually rewarding and enjoyable in each painting. But I have this other mission that kind of really has taken the forefront of my life, which is to help others discover their inner artist. And there's nothing that gives me greater joy, and I now have started to see as almost part of the body of work is the things that I teach and the things that I share with you and then you guys having those big successes and hearing your stories. So really, it's your resonance in your creativity and my resonance in my creativity that takes the most fun. It's why we do it. It's, you know, the whole purpose is to create something that feels meaningful in here. Question three, what is your biggest struggle as an artist and how do you deal with it? I think my biggest struggle is probably a very common biggest struggle uh, for an artist. I think it's maybe something we all have in common, our common ground, which is it's very easy to fall into pitfalls of self-doubt and criticism. Um, kicking that inner critic to the, you know, out of the table, you making sure they're not in your studio, not comparing yourself and judging yourself in a negative way against other artists Oh, that's so hard. And I, I'm at this for, oh gosh, guys, decades, too many decades. Let's not talk about how many decades, but long enough to know that that struggle, that pitfall of looking and determining that somehow you're not measuring up to some arbitrary goal that you set in your head. I can still, and John can attest to this, set weird arbitrary things where I'll be like, I'm not as good as, or I can't do this, and therefore it's no good. And then John has to remind me to just get back into myself and into my head. And I think that that is all of our struggles. And what we can do in that is to be a good best friend to ourselves, um, to speak kindly to ourselves. If you find yourself in that moment where you're just really judging it, just step back up again and, and remember that this is art. <laughs> We're coloring. You know, I, I don't care if you're the most serious artist in the world. You're, you're playing. And, and even if you're doing it for a living, you're just getting to play for a living. And, and not everything has to be whatever you assess as perfect. It just needs to be enjoyable. And, you know, so just stepping back and going, what am I doing in evaluating that? And going, you know, when I say this to a child, if you wouldn't say it to a four-year-old child, for goodness sakes, don't say it to yourself. Right? It has to be at least kind enough to say to a four-year-old kid to say to yourself. So just remember, give advice that you would want to give in your own inner self-talk. And remember that there is no arbitrary art jury in the sky equating worth. And those likes, oh, those likes online, I mean, I have to think about them because they're part of my business. But honestly, the meaning of them has nothing to do with my painting. I can put up a painting and maybe it doesn't post at a great time and it doesn't get a lot of likes. And I put up another painting and it posts at a great time and it gets a lot of likes. Those things don't have anything to do with the painting. That's about an algorithm and the algorithm doesn't care what I painted. Knowing that what you're putting out there, it doesn't have to please another person. And sometimes it doesn't even have to please yourself. Isn't that a trip? But it just doesn't. It just is enough that you did it and you're enough because you painted it. Question four. What is a skill, new or existing, that you would like to develop more? Well, I have kind of a very sci-fi answer to that, actually. And it's an interesting time in my life. Because I've been getting very excited about artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence and the types of AIs that generate images. Uh, collaborative creating with these systems has become very exciting to me. And it's a very different skill set. The idea of being in, 
I'm not going to say the metaverse because that's just irritating, but you know, virtual worlds creating this sort of new edge of technology. I would actually like to be a little more versed in these new uh, edges of technology, these new opportunities for creativity. I am, again, we're not going to say how many decades old, but I'm, I'm a few, I'm a few decades old. I got a, I got a few behind me going on. I got some wisdom. Um, and so here's this great, exciting technology, this great, exciting opportunities. There's these, there's these new programs going on and it, I'd like to be a little braver and get into them more. Sometimes um, that learning curve seems challenging. It really does having to learn new terms, technologies, techniques, information. Uh, John's been very excited about it as well. Uh, I'm going to be adding that into my uh, experience with my community working with AI. So um, it's just fun. But I, I know it seems scary and sci-fi, but for me, it's just fun and exciting. And I'd like to be better in that space, that digital, creative, virtual space. Question five, what would you like struggling artists to know? You belong here. You deserve to be here. You're not missing anything or lacking anything. You don't need to prove yourself. You don't need to justify that you have some skill or idea or future potential talent that, you know, lets you deserve to be here. You deserve to be here and you belong in this art community and not every brushstroke that you make has to be perfect to to do that. Not every Not every painting you have to make has to be you know, blowing everybody's mind in groove, right? You deserve to be here. You deserve to be treated well and to be celebrated in your art, no matter what your level is, no matter where you are. Everyone's his art journey, right? But that's because it's such a true thing. It's it's not a destination that you just arrived to. It's just a constantly evolving, progressing process that you're going to be in as long as you're creative. So if you're coming in and I see this happen all the time and it just really always hits my heart where people will uh, kind of preemptively say, well, you know, I, I don't know anything about art and I, and I don't think I'm going to be any good. And they're already trying to say, hey, like, you know, don't attack me if you don't think I belong here. This group, this space is a safe space and you do belong here. Absolutely. And that's something that you can trust in. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't true. So now that we've done all that, today I'm going to show you how you can create an abstract floral very easily, even if you've never painted before. We're going to jump into this lesson. It's going to be broken down into steps. Um, we will be drawing between steps. I'll let you know when that's going to happen. We're going to be using uh, simple tools, simple colors. If you don't have exactly what I have, guess what? It's no big deal. Use the closest approximation of what you have because it's just more important than you participate, than you be perfect. You're going to hear John throughout Hello. the lesson. Say hi, John. Hello. <laughs> so John's going to be there uh, making sure that everything is working technologically and sometimes talking to me so that I'm like, because sometimes I'll say weird things and he'll be like, hey, did you mean to say that? And I'll be like, oh, no, I don't know what I was talking about. So you will hear his disembodied voice, but I promise you there's a point. There's really nothing for you to do. But get your paint, get your brushes, come back and join me at this little canvas. You really can do this. Come on, let's go. So as we begin this really fun project, I just want you to take a minute and take a deep breath with me and breathe in and breathe out. If you're really new to art, it's strange how you can have all this sort of performance anxiety. And it's important to try to relax yourself at the beginning of the project so that you're present to how fun it actually is to just paint. Because that's our goal here, just paint. Isn't that right, John? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to start out with a big brush. And, and this is just because this is my biggest brush. You could use yours. This is a synthetic bright. It's a number 30 short handle Simply Simmons. And really what you're looking at is a brush that's more than an inch wide and a bright or flat, just to spread out the paint nicely. That's, that's not specialty. It's, 
It's not something like you've just got to have. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to load up with my white paint both sides of the brush. I want you to notice how I'm loading. This helps put more paint inside the brush so that when I'm painting it out, I have better coverage with the color that I'm putting out and it's not drying out on me. Mm. Now, I think I'd like it just a little darker than that. So if I come here, I might add just a little more. I'm going to take my cup and I want you to see how deep I'm dipping in, not very deep. And the reason that I'm not dipping in very deeply is because acrylic is thinned with watercolor. All right, here we go. Acrylic is thinned with watercolor? Or water. Or water. Or water. I'm not even going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know why John's here. Not just to edit, switch cameras, and make sure everything is focused, but also because when I get to painting, sometimes I just get relaxed. And I get to chilling out, and I kind of drift away. Mm -hmm. Now, the color I'm trying for here is kind of like if you think of old documents or parchments, right? Just kind of that kind of color. It's neutral. It's a very neutral background. So when we do these bright, abstracted flowers on here, um, it's going to allow them to really pop because what we're looking for is a difference between the lightness of the surface and the vibrancy and depth of the flowers. That's very exciting to our brains. To do the next part, though, it's very important that you let this dry completely. If you try to paint, continue painting on when it's wet, you're going to mix up the surface canvas with the paint. I'm going to use a hair dryer to speed it along. You could... Uh, do something around the house you need to do, make a cup of coffee or hair dry as I'm going to. When we come back in the next step, I'm going to show you the next fun part of this easy floral project. Now for the next step, we're going to be making brush strokes, which I know if you're very new to painting can feel like, oh, it was good when we just painted the canvas one color. But now that we're going to throw some canvas and brush strokes and florals in there, uh, I'm not really sure. A couple of things to let you know, a little magic behind the curtain. Some of this is going to be a bit easier because I'm using a brush called a filbert. A filbert is rounded at the end instead of being flat. And it's going to allow me to shape the petals of my abstracted flowers a bit better. Uh, John knows I love these brushes. They're really great. Mm -hmm. You could do this with a round or another brush, but if you can, this is a number eight Simply Simmons Filbert in their extra firm filament, which is a little better for heavy body paint, but you could do this with craft paint too. You just want this shape in the brush to get the, the yummy good effect. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. Make sure I don't have too much water on it, right? And I'm going to come in and start to put in my abstract flowers. The great thing about abstract flowers, I'm getting loaded in the red. You see me doing the flip. I'm going to come over here and kind of flip into the yellow. Let's come into this upper right left corner. I'm going to plant my brush stroke and curve down, pressing with medium firmness. I kind of turn the brush and release. All right. Mm -hmm. That's giving me the beginning. Now I've loaded again. Another thing that's the magic behind the curtain is see how these paints aren't mixed together thoroughly? Mm -hmm. They're mixing together on the canvas, and that's going to give my flower or my object that feels very much like a flower um, a lot of interest in color. Get pressing kind of firmly and then turning and releasing. Let's come here out towards the middle, and I'm going to curve down and in this time. And curve up and in. So already I'm kind of building and constructing what could be floral. I also am going to get a little more yellow on my brush. This is where it's looking right now. Stroking onto the inside. So these will feel a bit like a poppy, but they're not a poppy. I'm going to come here and where these two are, are a little bit too separated, I'll come in with a third stroke, sort of even that out. Mm. This is not like one stroke painting, but honestly, one stroke painting is a painting technique. You will sometimes double load or use pressure and brush shape to create form. Um, so sometimes we mistakenly think of those things as crafting. Hmm. 
right? But I think it's better to think as crafting as art <laughs> with purpose, right? Because some art's supposed to go on your wall. Right. That's just, it's only, that's what all it's supposed to do, but some art's supposed to be part of your life, right? And I think uh, we kind of can, as a society, forget that crafting is just art with function. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to come back this way. Now, this curve is going to come like this. That's looking pretty good. I think I would have liked that to be a little rounded, so I'm going to come back and make sure that I round it. Make it a little more red for the center here. See, I'm pulling those in. Now, I've got one last little one here that I want to fill out. So, as an artist, if you can, early in your development, release those types of ideas from your creative construct, you will be super glad for it. I'm just doing two right there. Because it will free you from predetermining judgments that limit your opportunities. Hmm. You know, if yeah. you, yeah, exactly. If you go into a, uh, like a quilting uh, course and you go, this is art, right? It's just art with purpose. I sleep under it. You're going to learn so much about design and color and form and function that will impact other areas of your creative life. I don't need to worry about finishing that center in any way because we're going to do that later with another stroke. So we have this really sort of flower-like form. It makes us think of flower. It's not a like accurate rendering of a flower, but it makes us think of flowers. Right? I'm going to rinse out pretty well. I'm going to do the double wash. I have one cup for the dirty water and one cup for cleaner water. Helps my brush get clean. Paper, towels in between. Okay, now normally I would do these all in one step, but I want you to just kind of think of this and not be under pressure. We're going to come back and add a couple more flowers to our abstract floral. So here we are. We've got some surface to fill up with more interesting objects. Abstract still uses design and color and all the traditional elements of any traditional art, right? So whether we're abstracting a floral or painting a traditional realistic floral, we still have to think about how lines and shapes impact us, the viewer, mm -hmm. or you, the painter. I'm going to come here, and I think this time I'm going to get a bit more yellow on my brush. You can see I've just loaded up quite a lot more yellow. There's some red in it, but more. And I'm going to come up here with a little curve and a counter curve. Curving in. And then I might come on this brush on the edge, right? I'm just making that little shape. Get a lot more red on my brush, but not rinse out. There we go. I'm going to press that in and curve that in more. I like that. Every mark on our surface has weight. And that's all we're playing with, is the way that every mark on the surface has weight. Mm -hmm. Let me come in and sort of fill that in a bit. And let's come down here and give kind of an interesting shape down here. Okay, so we've got this interesting little shape up here. And I know I want to put one down here, but I'm feeling like this one needs to be a little bit heavier. And what I mean by that is more substantial. And so I'm going to bring another little brush stroke to the side there, just to be sure. I know I've got a center point that I'm going to be doing, but I just want to have that much weight. Now coming down here with, again, more red, because, you know, kind of poppy ish poppies. I'm going to bring this in a curve, right? It's going to curve up from left to right. And kind of twist on that. Come next to that. And next to that. That looks pretty good. Let's get some heavy in our yellow. A little more heavy in the yellow. And maybe on the edge. Well, that's nice. A little curve back. back into the red. 
All right, look at us. We have our three core floral shapes, ish, floral. I think we should just go floral-ish, just to be comfortable with hmm. each other. Just go floral-ish. Look, yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. This is the space where if you're very new, you might have a panic attack and go, it's different, it's wrong, I have to stop. At this moment, if you're feeling that, I just want you to breathe with me. Abstracted art is not about creating exactly what I create. It's about understanding the concepts and playing with the techniques. And your most important job right now is not to paint exactly this, but it's to have a good time painting it and kind of pay attention to how your brush and your paint and your canvas dance together when you make these brush strokes. All right, let's dry this thoroughly. When we come back, I'll show you the next step in the painting. So we're going to continue on with our painting. I want you to know you're doing great. It can be hard to feel like you're doing great. That can be the challenging part. This next part, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to add some interest in our flowers, some texture, some layer. I'm going to take the same brush, my Felbert, and I'm going to load it with just white. I'm going to come into this flower and I'm going to make a couple little curved strokes. The brush is almost at this angle right here, and that's kind of nice. I'm going to do little commas. They're like little commas. Mm. I haven't really put that much water on the brush because I want the paint to come out kind of thickly. 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 I'm going to come, and you can see I've kind of changed the angle of the brush the way that I'm brush stroking that on. I'm coming back and going this way. Oh, I like that. That's nice. It adds some dimensionality. Hmm. I'm going to come and put a little of this in here as well. As you do. Small stroke there. Because that one's bigger, I wanted to put in a small stroke. I may add some water and wipe off my brush. And that's just so things don't get gummy. I like that. That's very good. That's looking super great. And while this is having a think, mm -hmm. it's thinking about what it's done, I'm going to grab a round brush. Now, this happens to be a number four uh, Art Sherpa brush. Uh, there, you may run into them still occasionally. We'll have them uh, again on market soon. Um, but really just any number four brush that's a nice round um, that is in the same size. Sometimes they get crazy with the numbers. Um, just something that will let you have a nice point. I'm going to go ahead and load up some red. Now when I'm loading up a round brush, if you're noticing, I'll come here, grab a little water, and I go that little downstroke, and I roll and load to the toe. See, so roll and load to the toe. Weird little things sometimes can be big in our painting. I am going to draw out a little circle. Like you do. Mm -hmm. Maybe make a smaller one right here. This is a painting that would look quite good big. Yeah. Now I'm going to wipe off on the towel and get some yellow. Dip in water, kind of load up same way before. And now because I didn't rinse out, I just wiped out, I have a nice little orange going. Just kind of use the nature of the brush holding some pigment to create a nice little orange. Mm -hmm. Bring another little dot down there. The thing about the dots that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to have some big and some small. Dots. Now, what do those dots signify? They, I don't know, like what they, they don't have like a deep, profound meaning about man's inhumanity of man. Uh, 
But what they are is a very nice round structure and they help create balance against the flowers. I thought they were kind of mod. Well, they certainly have a bit of that. Uh, artists have long used structural shapes like this to convey um, design concepts. And it also can be like what it means to you. It speaks of Vespas cruising through the country spy side. That's where John's going. Somehow these round dots for him are Vespas. But they can be whatever they want for you. People. I find for me circles just in their intrinsic nature are happy like bubbles. Mm -hmm. Right? They they remind me of light refraction in the camera. They're a little bit like bubbles. Uh, the little lens flares when we look up at the sun, little sparkles. It's just balloons there's a lot of positive imagery with circles yeah you can just see something like ciao ciao <laughs> all right so hopefully you're doing great at home folks i'm sure you're like oh, i'm doing the most careful circles of my life so that would be a time to breathe relax those shoulders don't hunch over pay attention to your health and body and well-being guess what i'm gonna say here again john hmm. we gotta dry it dry 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 dry, dry. i'm gonna use a hair dryer you can allow it to dry in real time or use a hairdryer. Either is fine. I'll see you back, though, for the next step. So we're really almost there, and you guys are doing really good. And I hope what you're getting is that you can do these brushstrokes, you can do these techniques, and that abstract doesn't have to be an overwhelming or uh, off-putting kind of topic. That it can be kind of whimsical and playful. It doesn't have to be so deep. It can be deep. Ciao. Ciao. Stop. I'm going to do it too. You do it and then I do it. Ciao. <sighs> you got to add the Bella. Ciao, Bella. All right. So <laughs> from travels. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, see, we're in a joyful mood. Uh, hopefully you're in a joyful mood. Now I'm going to take my number four round again, and I'm going to get into a very surprising and um, kind of exciting area. I'm going to get into black. <gasps> mm. So again, one uh, drop of water in there, and I'm working it through the brush. Notice how I'm working it through the brush. Just making sure that my brush is loaded. This can be a little more important for... Um, heavy body paint than craft paint or bottle mm. paint because uh, it's a little thick. And if I want a thin application, I got to thin it. Hmm. I'm going to make a nice little circle. You're like, well, that was predictable, <laughs> but I am. And then I'm going to come here and also make a nice little circle. Same deal. more circles mm -hmm. they're so wonderful we can put some circles all around and we will but right now i'm just trying to get something kind of worked out now from this circle i'm going to curve in a curved line and kind of bending it down off the canvas a black line that's cool yeah you can't the line going off the canvas is about taking our subject matter away from what we can see as the viewer. We do that with a traditional floor. We'll have some of it going off to say there's more to this world hmm. than what you can see. You're only given a window. We can do that in these types of topics too. And then come here and make little curls with my brush stroke. Those are kind of interesting, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And then let's come around the white and I'm going to just sort of outline on the toe of my brush. Now how I'm getting that fine line is my brush pressure. I'm not pressing down hard so the line can be fine. I know some of you are going to be like, uh, will my Posca pen work here? Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. <laughs> it will totally work here and it's perfectly acceptable to use. Now you'll notice that I did those lines kind of above the yellow. Hmm, right? That is interesting. I didn't feel the need to connect those up and that space between those two things is just sort of, you come here maybe a little more firmly. And then that, not connected, little, you thought it was going to be a thing, but it wasn't that thing. Stroke, 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 stroke. Notice how they're mm -hmm. kind of big and then small. I'm going to 
Yeah, that's not too serious. One of my big things that I try to do teaching art online is to help uh, people just get back to enjoying the process. You can learn all the techniques and go as deep as you want in art. You don't have to be grinding your teeth to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to put pressure on yourselves. And I know that's not easy for everyone. I know sometimes it's, it's super simple to fall into that trap. Adding a little more because those are, those are fascinating little lines and I like them. Of just really being hard on yourself and having that negative self-talk. But you got to get back to, you know, that inner child mm -hmm. and, you know, try to speak kindly to them. To the person you are inside, the young person. Downward stroke and then back up. You can see it's quite light. It's super playful. Not very serious. That doesn't mean the artwork won't resonate at all. It just means your experience while you're painting it will be much more pleasant. And that kind of is important. Yeah. Make another little circle there. Mm -hmm. They're just lovely. And maybe a small one. Like that in the center. And a little bit of an outline. So these black lines have a lot of weight. Now, I do want to kind of bring a counter curve here. Just a little bit to sort of playfully balance backwards. That's really cool, the lining. It does. It just makes a pleasant little moment. Some of the ways that I might be different than you, if you're very new, is that I don't really second guess every moment of the lines that I make. Well, I can say, honestly, I, I have watched a lot of videos painting. Yes, you have. And I have seen artists color outside the lines, but this is the first time I've ever seen an artist line outside the colors. <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. I'm going to add another little layer to this. Well, that's pretty energetic already. That's pretty strong. Whenever I do a lot of reds, though, it is my preference to include a little green into it. Um, I just I just like how uh, that really plays against things. So I'm going to do that. You could be just done here, if that's your preference, but I'd like to add just one more little bit of strange and unusual whimsical pop hmm. to the piece. If you'd like to join me in that, we'll come back and we'll do that on the next step. Guess what? You got to try it. In acrylic, it's about when you need the paint to still be wet and when you need the paint to be dry to do the technique that you're working on. If you can master that, you have acrylic. The rest of it is just frosting all the way down. Okay, I'll see you back in a second with a dry canvas, and we'll finish up. Okay, you're doing really great. If you decided to come in and do the last little bit with me, that'll be fun. I'm going to keep on with that number four round brush. I'm going to get into my green. You can see it's a really fun green. This is that phthalo green. Add a little white to it. When you add white to phthalo green, it makes kind of a mint. Hmm. I'm going to come along the inside of this, round the round and down. Get a little more white into that. Isn't that interesting right there? Mm -hmm. just, a, just a fascinating pop of color. Now I'm going to come here and add a little bit of the green that way. Sometimes 
I enjoy creating a surprise color. Something that you don't expect. Kind of bring some unexpected attention. Yeah, something a little playful. I'm thinking about kind of doing an interesting thing. I'm going to kind of press down, make little marks like that. These are almost like little leaves, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Little marks, just to press and release. Oh, definitely a this stem. Mm -hmm. On the toe. See, just a little, little whoop, whoop, whoop. Not perfect, but playful. I quite like them. Just a little bit there. And I think we're there. Sometimes a little bit less is more. You kind of take that all in and, you know, look at it and go, is there anything that I feel like I'm missing? But I think right now the composition is really strong and not too overwhelming. Because sometimes abstract feels like a big concept, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign it. And I'm going to use my brush here, I think. Just load it up right on the toe. This works best if you have a sharp brush, but if you don't have a sharp brush, you may need to use like a pen, like a Posca, which mm. I do have. I do have a Posca pen, but I'm gonna just use the brush. Because it kind of works with everything that we've got. So this is the taster. Hopefully it was an amuse bouche of art. I think I say that every year. <laughs> But it is. It's like a little, it's a little notch. It's a little bit of like, it could be like this. Now, Lifebook is immersive. It's transformative. This is just, oh gosh, a, a, a welcoming sign invitation into that. You know, more information is available, uh, you know, as we go. You're going to just love it. We do have a free gift that will be available to you on, uh, they'll share that in group and on the taster page. I'm thinking of giving you guys a link to one of my very favorite lessons that I have done, my private lessons, so that you could come and see what I do there. <sighs> if you're going to bet on anything, bet on yourself and bet that you can do this. There is enough support here. And there are enough people interested and invested in your well-being and outcome for you to really succeed. See, that's something you can completely count on. I so appreciate your time. John so appreciates your mm -hmm. time. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you and Easel really soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>